let's make a simulation. I will add a plane because that's our ground. And since my simulation is made for Second Life, I want to make sure that the size is correct. So our animations uh, that are created from the simulations can only be transformed 5 meters. That's 10 meters end to end, so I'll make this 10 meters. Around 10 meters. And I'll just uh, turn this into a more solid object because physics will work better, or at least we won't have to bump into the problem that may result from a flat plane, and I'll apply that. That's fine. I'm going to bring that down. Oh, it's already down. That's good. Let's make sure. I don't even know. No, normals aren't important, I think. Whatever. Leave it that way. I'm going to make a box, a cube, and bring that up. Let's turn on my move gizmo here. Make it more sensible. I'll bring it over. Let's see what I want to bring it over. I'll work along the Y axis, so I'll, I'll bring that over back here. And <coughs> make sure that is not up too high. How high is that? Z? It can only be about 5 meters from the Avatar center, which is going to be 1.06 uh, Avatar the pelvis, which is 1.06 meters above the ground. And that particular dimension is not important, uh, except that I don't want to move more than 5 meters away from the pelvis. I'm going to turn this into a box, so I'm going to go into Edit. I mean, I'm going to turn this into like a, a container. So I want to extrude this. All right, E. And I'll just bring that up a little bit. And I'm going to scale this in somewhat. I have to turn on my snaps and vertex, and then pop that down to an edge. And then I'm going to extrude it again, and bring it down close to the bottom. E to extrude right to escape so I get my axis. You can also hit G and Z. So there we go. I have my box. I'm going to put some things in the box. I will put little boxes in the box because those will simulate just fine. So I'll add another box. Cube. Bring it up and I will scale it. How big do I want it for my container? We'll just fit a few large-ish ones in there. I'll start with the top. I'm going to fill my box first, freeze the um, simulation, and then use that to empty the box. Uh, Shift-D, and I'll drag one over. Do it again. Shift-D. Do one more time here. And shift click on all these and shift D. Right click, drag it over. Again, add these to the selection. And shift D. Right click. I'm going to do the same thing in the horizontal plane. I'll just marquee select all these and deselect the box. Make sure one of these are active and shift D. I can select all those, but let's just get this done and see how they fall. That should be enough. I'm going to save my, uh, my scene now that I have something substantial. And I have a temp file here. I'm 
just going to save it as a temp. And I'm going to turn the ground into... Well, let me show you what happens if I don't do what I'm about to do. First thing I'm going to do is select one of these boxes, just one. It's going to fall through. I'm going to turn that into a simulated item. Find a simulation. Rigid body and just play. You see it just falls through the whole thing. Now if I turn this into a rigid body as well, I need to make sure it's passive so it doesn't move like that one did. And that will bounce around. Now if I start goofing with the parameters to get the kind of um, response I want, uh, I can see what's going to happen to all the rest of them when I apply the simulation to those. So let's first make sure I have my simulated object selected and I'm going to, I don't know, bump up the kilograms. That's like 200, 200, Ooh. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. How'd that happen? What? Oh, that was weird. I just went like in the teens. Alright. Um, and convex hold? No, let's just make it a box because it is. And I'll goof around with the. Um, <coughs> I'm going to goof around with the friction. I want to turn that up and a little bit of bounce. I also want to put some bounce on this thing. And, and I want to bump the friction way up because I don't want this to fall off the edge. So let's see what we got here. It's got a nice little bounce. It's a little too erratic. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that. Let's, uh, let's apply the scale to everything and see what we get with that. That might be a problem. Apply, oh, apply rotation. I won't re apply location because I want the objects to have their origin. Uh, apply scale, definitely. I'm going to play that again. It does actually respond differently. Now, let's select this object. Oops, sorry. Select this object. And I want to apply the uh, properties of that to the remainder of the cubes that are in the box, but not the box itself. And in order to do that, I need to make that the active one. And we have a quick tool here in the simulator. And I just copy rigid and it copies it to all the other ones from the active one. So now they should all fall. That's great. Now I don't want them falling out of the box. So I'm going to make the box a rigid body, I'm going to make it passive, and they're going to settle inside the box, hopefully. Ooh, they bounce. That's because the box's um, collision shape is wrong. Make it uh, mesh, and try again. Okay, now that we're in the box, I'm going to make sure this is completely simulated, and where, they, where you want them, and then I'm just going to place them place the timeline where I where I want them to settle. Now I just want these settled in the box. This isn't part of my simulation, so now that they're settled in the box, I'm going to deselect the box. I want to make sure one is active. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary for this particular process. But then I want to go object um, let me see if I can find this again. Uh, well my brain isn't working. I know it's apply uh, visual transforms. So I'll do that. And then I want to remove the simulation from the objects. In order to do that, I have a tool here. It does the same thing. Uh, just remove sim, it's called. Just remove the sim. Okay, now I can go in the timeline. And you can see that the objects are where I want them to be, inside the box and contained. Now we'll continue with the actual simulation that we want to see. So I want to animate this box emptying the objects. In order to do that, I need to, well, animate the box. So let me give it a keyframe to start with, and it will be a rotation, because that's all I'm going to do. And I'm just going to set a key the beginning and then like I don't know 
let it take uh, 40 frames to rotate and I will rotate this like that and I to insert a keyframe and I'm gonna move these over so I just marquee select them hit G and I'm just gonna move them over to like frame 60 so it starts it around well let's frame 30 and then you'll see that the that the box will rotate after the items settle just a little bit uh, in order for this to interact with the box, I'll show you what happens if we don't do it. First thing I want to do is put the rigid body back on to the item, bring it up into its teens here, make it a box, uh, give it some friction and bounce, and make sure this is working. Okay, now, oh, ooh, that didn't work. Let me grab one of my items here. And um, that is, does that have rigid body on it? It does. How come it's not moving? Because it's settled in. Um, I have to enable animation on this. So now you can see that the um, block follows with it. Okay, so now I'm going to transfer that uh, rigid body over to the rest of the um, the blocks make sure that one's active and say copy rigid let's see what we get for simulation all right so that was decent and the piece fell off but you can goof around with the surface properties here for instance turn down bounce a little bit maybe and do the same thing for these perhaps but we'll see what happens right now A little piece falls off. We don't want that to happen. But you can goof around with the properties to fix that. That is all.